So this segment, let's continue talking about the periodic table and focus on the last group all the way to the right, the nonmetals, and let's focus on group 8A or the noble gases. So I'm going to point that out here on my periodic table. It includes helium and neon, argon, krypton, um, xenon, and radon. And so sometimes I said group 8A, and here it's listed as zero, but depending on which periodic table you are looking at, it may look a little bit different. But the properties are the same, and all the way to the right, we know these are the noble gases. And so what are the noble gases, and why do we call them that? So all the elements that exist in that family are all gases, and they're all nonmetals. And so they all exist as monatomic ions, sorry, as monatomic elements. And so that means they consist of single atoms rather than molecules. So like hydrogen gas, for instance, is a diatomic. It's H2. There are two of them together. For instance, neon is just neon. It exists monatomically. So these guys, too, since they're all the way on the right of the periodic table, have completely filled S and P valence shells. Recall that your S orbital can hold maximally two electrons, and your P orbital can hold six maximum. So all of the noble gases have both of those guys filled. So as a result of that, they also have high ionization energies. Remember that the higher the ionization energy, the less likely it is that that element is going to become an ion. So noble gases are basically what every other element is striving to be. They want that stability, which is why they lose and or gain electrons. Noble gases don't really need any help with that, so they have super high ionization energies and you probably will not be removing any electrons from the noble gases. So as a result, again, of that, just to put it on a little bit thicker, these guys are exceptionally unreactive, okay? So unlike the group 1A elements like sodium and um, potassium that, want, that are super reactive and have um, really low ionization energies, want to lose electrons, these guys, the noble gases, are the opposite. And sometimes we call those inert. So since I said they're all gases, we call them inert gases. That's just to say, again, that they're super unreactive. For instance, if you were doing an experiment where um, your environment was sensitive to oxygen, you could purge that environment with, say, an argon gas so that the gas, I mean, the environment would become inert and unreactive, and therefore you could carry out your experiment. And that is noble gases.